What up, Hello Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again, here with my husband. Hello, husband. You look so handsome with your hair done. Why, thank you, my love. You're welcome, my sweet. Next time we go, we're going to get ours braided together, like, at the same time. <laughs> she can't work on both of us at the same time. I mean, I could show up, and then you could show up, and then I'll be done in, like, 45 minutes, and, and then I'll, I'll meet you at home. And I'll be eight hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. If you guys haven't already checked out the CJ the Champ video on my husband's channel, go do that. Sure. Go do that. Go have a good time over there. I'll have you. But come stay here first. Oh, okay. Like come here for like, you know, cocktails and aperitifs. And then you can go <laughs> over to his channel for like the main entree, you know? Rib caps. Rib caps? Yeah, rib eye caps. Rib eye caps. Rib eye caps. Pin Delicious. Caps. Best cut of meat. Any Speaking of food, yeah. I brought you a snack since we had to shoot so many videos. The old red box of chicken bites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Didn't think you were going to actually eat it, but uh, here's a salt. You're supposed to look at it. You just grab it immediately. <laughs> you put, it's just like a prop. You ever heard of a prop? I love a snack. Yeah. It's we, very cold. Yeah, it was a prop. It, it's like when you go to a store and they have the shoes laying out, you know, those aren't the ones you buy. They go on the back and get like a fresh pair. That's hard. Yeah, this is like the rubber fruit of, uh, plastic fruit of our display case here. Man, that's a cold piece of chicken. <sighs> Anyways, today we are here to watch When Cats Break the Rule. Thank you for the snack, my love. Yeah. I appreciate it. I the didn't prop know snack. I wasn't supposed to eat it. Mm-hmm. You gave it to me, we so I thought I should on. eat it. Yeah. <laughs> when, when cats break the rules. Uh -huh. This is When Cats Break the Rules of Nature by Casual Geographic. Mm -hmm. You guys have been really enjoying Casual Geographic content, and that makes me happy because I also really enjoy Casual Geographic content. So thank you for supporting me. And just so you guys know, if there's any graphic content that is casual in this video, it is aggressively casual mm -hmm. that it has blood and guts. So be aware that that might happen. Yeah. That is my warning, YouTube. Please take it as such. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited to see what this video has in store for us. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Why don't you ever reverse it? Look like Dr. Strange. Somebody said that. It's a dachshund. We're about to get eight up. Yeah, little hot dogs in there. Yeah. Brought the don't Hawaiian be suspicious. lunch. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> that, no, that's cute. He's dressed in a tiger costume. Yeah, that's Sometimes cute. all it takes is one picture going viral to completely shatter everything we thought we knew about the world. Right. This is one of those pictures. So the story goes, a mother tiger in California tragically lost her cubs to premature labor and the loss left her wow. so depressed that she would barely move and wouldn't eat at all. Worried for her well-being, zookeepers took five baby pigs, wrapped them in tiger skin, <laughs> and like only a true mother would, the tiger adopted them all. She would nurse them, eat and sleep with them, and refuse to let them out of her sight. It was your typical Disney feel-good story that warmed the hearts of anyone who saw it. Now, here's where you have a choice. Okay. I can let you keep believing that story and just leave you with the happy ending. Uh -huh. In which case, you should probably click off this video, drink water, hug your mother, all that good I'm stuff. Leaving. We'll see you in the next. I'm all leaving. right. I'm out. Good. Goodbye. Hey, thanks for joining us. Today's <laughs> video was very, very short. Uh, we're gonna go back eating our cold chicken, and if anybody asks. This is the last thing we've ever seen of it. Um, yeah, my wife is gone. She had other things to do. My name is Chavez. If you've never met me, it's good to meet you too. And thanks for inviting me into your living room. Your mother said I could come in. A few moments later. We're gonna have to play the rest of this video, I think. <laughs> Aren't we? Yes. I'm <sighs> sorry. Oh, man. I'm predicting that she man. eats these pigs. Right, hopefully he's like, this is just a setup. He, he, he like, eats these pigs. Just, just tell him it's a setup, dude. Do it. For the rest of y'all going red pill, just remember, you chose this. So this picture is 100% real. No Photoshop, no filter. Mm. Th this happened. Mm. The story I just told you behind it was completely made up. Oh. First of all, this wasn't even taken in California. It was 8,000 miles away in one of the biggest tiger hubs in the world, the Sriracha Zoo in Pattaya, Thailand. This isn't a wholesome story about a tiger taking the role of swine surrogate. It's actually one of the most unhinged experiments you've never heard of. You see, this zoo wanted to know if they could successfully rewire the nature of a tiger, and they did that by having one be raised by a pig. Yeah, they basically decided to play God with a giga-sized Garfield. This is so far off from where I thought we were gonna be. Um, th I think I would have rather the Not, previous story, yeah. and then she just ate Take them. the pigs. Yeah, this is way worse. 
This is twisted. Okay. All right. Okay. God, man. All right. Go for it. I mean, this was back in 2004, but it was also 11 years after Jurassic Park. Someone should have known better. <laughs> so the Sriracha Zoo had a mother pig raise a litter of tiger cubs. The tiger in the viral picture was two-year-old Saimai, and she was actually brought up and nursed by a pig until she was four months old. The whole point was to see if being raised by a pork product could make an apex predator less of a life risk and more docile. No. And from the pictures and videos, it would seem like it worked. Until it didn't. It would take years, but eventually several claims would come out. You know, claims of animal mistreatment, exploitation, and straight up abuse. It's right? Man. Jesus. <sighs> and it's so tough, too, because, like, who stands up for the rights of animals? You know, they're big, they're hard to feed, they're hard to tame. And when you get caught up in economics, man, people just get a little twisted about it, dude. Mm -hmm. You gotta treat them like kids, yeah. you know? You can't treat them like animals, because then it just gets worse and worse. But also, fuck PETA. To this day. I mean, what, what? What? Oh, okay. Call a stray. One of those places guys would go to to take a selfie with a tiger to put on Tinder. And I genuinely hope that was the That's only cat thing? any of y'all ever saw. The zoo also had Damn. a bunch of hands-on stuff you could do with tigers, which is probably the biggest red flag a zoo can have. Yeah. The same stripe delete button that can solo a walking bicep also sits still for a stranger's selfie. Start looking left, because right, ain't right. right. So to make a long story short, if Tiger King would have came out in 2004, Joe Exotic would have been Bangkoking in Thailand. There was even an incident where 23 <laughs> tigers flatlined a bird flu after being fed raw contaminated chicken. Oh and then God. there's also the fact that one of the zoo owners, Samay Tamsiripong, was charged with breeding tigers without a license. It took a worldwide mm -hmm. pandemic to do it, but eventually the zoo closed its doors July 13th, 2021. Oh, good. Whatever happened to Sai Mai and her foster pigs? Well, 16 years after this picture was taken, another video would go viral. Only this time, it was a now 19-year-old Sai Mai pouncing on one of the piglets and not in a cute playing type of way. The only thing it. stopping Wilbur yeah. from becoming the end of Charlotte's Web was a zookeeper distracting the tiger before a bunch of small children found out oh, where baking my comes goodness. from. That video wasn't exactly the nail in the coffin, it was more like the shovel that started the digging. Mm. But that video also proved is that you can't change nature, no, no matter how many sequels this franchise gets. <laughs> like take this video for example, where this polar bear went viral for seemingly petting a husky in Canada. The biggest meat eater in the world on legs and even he can't help himself. Adorable, right? The part that didn't go viral was immediately after when the polar bear proceeded to send the dog to dog backwards by attacking and eating it. All while the dog was chained up and couldn't even run. Hey, remember, you chose the red pill. You didn't tell me it was a two-part red pill, you liar. You hit one for one, then you surprised us with the other one. Then you hit us with it with the fact that it was chained up, like I was supposed to see that coming or something. I killed the puppy. That was chained up after petting it. And you know, dogs are mad chill after getting pet. The point is, there are rules in nature, and every time we cosplay as creator and break them means one less dog, one confused tiger, and a bunch of- He was asking for help. He was barking and asking for help. You didn't even hear it bark. Now you're just making up the background. I could tell. You don't need to make it worse for yourself. And every time we uh, cosplay look, as creator- he's so scared. He's gonna get eaten, yeah. He's fucking, yeah, he's about to get eaten. And break them means one less dog, one confused tiger. Okay. I just thought of something. All dogs go to heaven, so it's okay that he got murdered on a chain? No. Oh. Okay. Still very sad that the puppy got eaten. It's like very sad. I almost cried, but I didn't. I'm very proud of myself. Um. So you know how a lot of people- Get it together. Get it together. There's too many emotions. Listen, listen to me. So you know how it's real hard to get people to care about climate change, right? Like there's just like, that man literally set himself on fire in front of the Supreme Court because he's like, y'all need to listen. Like things are not good, okay? Right. He came off a little hot, but I'm understanding where you're coming from with that. Climate change, world's heating up. And he set himself on fire. Also that part, but I was thinking more about the world heating. Oh, so it's just a coincidence that he set himself on fire and you said he came off a little hot? Well. So anyway, it's real hard to get people, but yes. just tell people, polar bears will eat your dogs. Right, yeah, polar bears are coming in, yeah, they actually. They will eat your dogs, they will eat your cats, they will eat your bunnies. Mm -hmm. Those of you guys who think raccoons are cute, off the they list. They will eat the raccoons. We all know that people care more about animal right violations than human right violations. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I'm appealing to that that demographic. They will eat your loved ones. Like slurping up guinea pigs like <laughs> spaghetti, who then now will finally start caring. And a bunch of pigs that are gonna have one hell of an identity crisis. But sometimes nature breaks rules all on its own and all it leaves us with 
or questions. Kamunyak was a lioness living in the Samburu Reserve in Kenya who had become famous worldwide in 2002 for violating the number one rule of being a lion. The lioness was seen with a young, as in not older than a week old, oryx calf. She didn't turn the calf into calories, instead she acted as his bodyguard, following it around everywhere and even defending it from other animals attempting to meal prep. That's the lioness cute. had adopted something that any other day would have just been protein. Right. And this time humans had nothing to do with it. Tourists would flock in from all over to witness this disrespect to the natural order and even <laughs> after seeing it with their own eyes they still didn't believe it. Kamunyak only confused rangers the more they watched her. At one point, she squared up with a group of cheetahs for looking at the oryx calf the wrong way. <laughs> she would literally starve herself for the calf's sake. She couldn't go out and hunt for herself since the little oryx calf would just wander around aimlessly instead of staying hidden in one place the way an actual lion cub would. Right. So for the more than two weeks these two were together, she just didn't eat. Aww. I can only imagine what the other lions thought. This was basically like a man walking into an orphanage and then leaving with a Big Mac and a stroller. <laughs> like that time Spongebob had an entire relationship arc with something he grills for a living. Was that foreshadowing? Hey man, just watch the video. It was, wasn't it? Just listen. I'm a, I'm a little paranoid after the first part of the video, okay? Look what he says. Yeah. That's foreshadowing. Yeah. He's telling me something. Yeah. He did end up eating the burger at the end of the day. So episode. I'm not getting attached to this story. It wasn't traumatizing in the SpongeBob thing, but it was eye-opening. That reminds me of that story that that person told when they said, was it you? You ate your pet chicken? Yeah. Yeah. That's fucked up. Still. That's still fucked up. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's just one of those things like Mandy smiling or EDP foster momming a cupcake and not eating it. It just breaks the natural order. One day, Kamunyak and her little calf went to get water, and in the short amount of time her back was turned, a male lion appeared and gave her a live demonstration of what a lion actually is. So yeah, no more baby. And the lioness that had nearly starved herself to death for it acted like any mother would after losing a cub of her own. And the rangers watching it all go down had no way of explaining it. Now, the baby oryx calf being chill with its number one op in the first place actually isn't that crazy. There's a good chance it was probably just too young to even know what fear was. Like when a baby wildebeest was filmed playing with a hyena cub as if his family reunion wouldn't dissect and eat him alive. <laughs> that is until its mother pulled up and bro remembered who he was and dipped. But a predator playing parent to prey is where rules get broken. It's something you'd expect from Disney and, like in Disney, it probably started from a family member getting murked. Kamunyak apparently had cubs of her own, and a violent dispute in the pride meant she lost them, likely to a new rival male. And with as young as she was, this was likely her first litter, and after losing them so brutally and hormones still running high, she probably didn't know what else to do. So it's possible that the calf imprinting on the lioness caused a motherly instinct to override to turn you into takeout and smoke you like a Marlboro instinct. At least that's just my guess, because no one thought to ask the lioness what was going through her. You know, I forget that, you know, when he shoots these videos, there's a lot of animal lovers but when you learn so much about animals, you think of them like animals. Mm -hmm. Where like people like us, like these cool little stories, we accept for what they are. Yeah. You know, you just do something out of the ordinary for a little bit, and then you go back to doing what you normally right. do. Yeah. Because survival just is that way. You yeah. know, you got to survive when it's time to survive. But if they were comfortable, they'd probably do a bunch of stuff differently, just like us. Yeah. You know, but animal lovers need that like explanation. Like, what, what were the hormones doing? Exactly. Like, what was yeah. the, you know, like the science in it. I'm just like... Just like, yeah, you know, she had maternal instincts for a little bit. I get those, too. Right. Then yeah. I'm actually around children. I'm like, oh, God. Put them back. <laughs> Stuff them back where they came from. They come out of the couch or the walls. I don't know first time, but this wouldn't be her only. This would happen not once, not twice, not even a hat trick, but Kamunyak the lioness would adopt six different oryx calves. Also, I feel like I should just mention, at this point, she was going out of her way to follow her just so she could steal any unattended <laughs> and it was like that movie. Like that movie with that lady who goes and like tries to steal that lady's baby when she's pregnant. What movie? Dude, you never saw that movie with that lady where she, like the lady has that baby, makes her have the baby, and she steals her baby? No. Oh, we finna watch that shit. With our new surround sound system. Oh my god. That we got on sale from Best Buy. <laughs> that should be to be baby crying all over left and right oh and back and rear and all over the place. It wasn't like she just didn't realize that these weren't lines because oftentimes she would let the newborn calf nurse from its actual mother before running her off. And in case you're curious about what happened to the rest of her foster kids, the second one was intercepted by park rangers and taken to an animal <laughs> orphanage in Nairobi. The third calf actually returned to its mother and during a nursing session, pieced out with the rest of its herd, even with Kamunyak chasing after them to get her baby back. Aww. Same thing happened with the fourth with the mother Oryx managing to reunite with her baby. And I can only imagine this made her learn her lesson in the worst way possible because she didn't let the fifth calf return to its mother and the end game was the calf going into a permacoma due to starvation, yeah. which Kamunyak would respond to by eating the soul evacuated body. 
And adoption number six went like three and four, with the kidnapped calf hightailing it back to his bio mom. And remember, she would go on a hunger strike for the entire time she was looking after each wow. other. And I'd love to tell you that this story ends with Kamunyak finally getting an actual family of her own. Except she was last sighted in 2004, and no one's been able to find her since. Oh. So if this was a movie, it'd be Lion King's troubled teenage cousin. Yeah. And it's not the only time this kind of thing would happen. In 2015, a film crew was focused on a herd of wildebeest, along with one lioness stalking them from the grasses. Okay. Fun fact, lions will often spawn wipe their prey by attacking the ones that have just given birth. So when the lioness made her move and the mother wildebeest dipped, it looked like it was about to be a revolving door for the baby right back to the gulag. Except that's not what happened. The apex predator hesitated on what would have probably been her easiest meal in months. And the literal minutes old wildebeest started nuzzling up to the huge cat, as if the same line that wasn't finna take him off this world was the one that brought him in. Right. And I don't know if it was that famous new baby smell, or if the fetus not showing any fear factory reset the line software, but not only did she spare him, <laughs> after a little while she left, and the still wet from the womb wildebeest calf reunited with its mother. That's and unlike cute. with Kamunyak, this lioness was 100% trying to catch a body, but something made her stop, and I have no idea why. That's At least so with the calf, cute. it's probably too young to know to run away, and just saw the lion as a warm body. Yeah. But an animal deciding to pretty much pardon something it's eaten hundreds of it in its life is something science can't 100 explain yeah that's and before so y'all say she must have felt bad for the baby there's literally videos on youtube of lions life depriving pregnant animals pulling the fetus out and yeah. eating both alive yeah. or i guess technically only one of them's alive i guess there is a chance the lioness was trying to use the baby as bait to murk its bigger more fulfilling mother and some articles think it's their version of playing with their food like a cat and mouse kind of thing mm -hmm. but like that still doesn't explain how a cat that can eat 15 pounds of meat a day would lose interest in free calories that fast exactly and the stories just keep coming in fact, just last year, a lioness was caught on camera looking like it was escorting a baby wildebeest calf back to its herd with the little guy following him the way he would with his bio mom. So I don't know, maybe when a lioness loses her cubs, the motherly instinct is so strong she'll project it on anything. Or maybe lions are realizing that chasing and catching their groceries is too much work and now they're trying the factory farming trick. <laughs> but a lion treating food like family wasn't the only time a major rule of cat culture was broken. Okay. Like, I want you to take a good look at this picture. This might look like nothing special, but let me give you some background. A lion's main goal in life is to pass down his genes as much as possible to keep his right. bloodline alive. The catch is, whenever a rival male or males take over a pride, the first thing they do is commit severely late-term abortions on any offspring that right. are theirs. Scar actively trying to put Simba on a t-shirt was scientifically accurate, although if it was 100%, he would have wiped out Nala too. <laughs> was so close to my face. But yeah, it felt very... You could back up at any time. It felt very invasive. Yeah. That was, <laughs> there was not enough for me. Really be all of I'm not an ASMR guy. Like, oh my god. Damn. But yeah, long story short, a new stepfather usually means caskets for any remaining cubs. Which is exactly what this male did. After he and another male took over a pride, he proceeded to give every cub a welcoming gift of a pair of wings and a halo. Every cub? <laughs> Except for that Twisted. one. That's not his kid, and he knows it. Not only was he seen sparing op DNA, he was even photographed playing with the cub. Also, a moment of silence for his actual dad. Man's just nearly lost his entire gene pool and got all his women snatched from him just to have his own chromosomes cuddling with the lion that did it. Yeah, and I just know that. bro watching from the gulag like, ain't no <laughs> Now, new males don't always go Casey Anthony on the children. Sometimes lionesses are able to fend off the newcomers, and sometimes the lions don't even bother with cubs that are nine months or older, i.e. cubs past the nursing phase. Mm -hmm. But like, that's the thing. That cub is definitely young enough to get turned into a rug. Right. And being cute with someone else's kid goes against basically everything we thought we knew about them. And it's not just lions defying nature. Male tigers usually want no parts in raising children. They might protect them, but that's it. Especially since tigers are solitary animals that have enough of a full-time job looking after themselves. Mm -hmm. But there was at least one tiger that broke this rule, and his name was P243. You see, our boy P243 had a mate, and that was P213-32. I, I didn't come up with the names. The no two problem. were together for over two years, and 243 was never seen with another tigress because we love a faithful king. But hey. his mate suddenly died, and it clearly had an effect on him. He spent hours sitting at the place his mate of many years passed, Aww. and when the tigress was cremated, P243 was on a scene less than an hour later. She didn't just leave him behind, but also four cubs. Damn. Normally, losing a mother that young means the orphans would soon get to go see her, but P243 God, didn't. We've rarely damn. seen a male tiger, <laughs> or really any male big cat for that matter, do. 
He stepped up. After that, P243 would often make kills, but leave the food behind for the four cubs who were too young to hunt for themselves. One time, the father caught a full-grown cow and left it behind without taking any for himself. Wow. But whenever the forest department would see the four cubs, the father would never be too far away. That Obviously, there isn't a mystery as to why he did this. I mean, there were his kids. But it also managed to break what we thought were the rules of being a male right. tiger. Because as dark and messed up as it sounds, it would actually make more sense to just cut losses and try again with another yeah. female. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking the time to raise kids that might not make it in the end when you really could just make more. Especially since 10 days after his mate died, trackers found him near another female. But the relationship didn't go anywhere and the two weren't seen together again. He's just like, you're not P2047, <laughs> bitch. You like, more like You'll P2, never seven, be her. Six. Yeah, I really, I don't really like that. Meanwhile, 243 continued looking after his cubs. There were even a few reports that the tiger had started teaching his cubs how to hunt. Now, there is no way of knowing for sure the cubs make it after all that, but according to the latest update I could find, all four cubs are still alive, healthy, and active. Which okay. would be great numbers even if they had a mother, but going four for four even after getting bambied, well, that's not supposed to happen. Bambi. At this point, every breath they take is overachieving, and you can thank Mr. 243 for that. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Would you still take care of our kids after I die? That's crazy. Where else would they go? <laughs> I just fucking put them on a stroll and roll them outside. You know, like, fend for yourself, little bitch. I, being a YouTuber is just so hard. I gotta be on camera, you know? Like, he was even seen dropping Chick fil A off the little niggas. Bro, he can't even chew. How is he gonna eat that? Not my problem, but I'm providing. This video. Human babies are so useless. This video reminds me when they talked about how. Human babies, you know, instead of developing to be more useful, mm -hmm. young, because we got to have so much calories going to our brain and mm -hmm. brain develops and be, be smart and shit. Mm -hmm. They just are cute. Yeah. So you just look at them and be like, that's a cute ass baby. I should preserve it. All right. And I'm thinking that's just all this is. Like, they're just being like, <laughs> that's a cute ass baby. But like, I, just, <laughs> I really just can't. It's just cute. I am hungry, but it's adorable. <laughs> You know? Yeah. And then, you know, I'll, I'll kill the ugly ones, but the, the damn cute ones, that's the ones we need <laughs> this, to live. This this baby was cuter than the other babies that I ate. Yo, the like, other babies were fetuses. That's, that's not even I'm cute. Saying. It's slimy. Like, it's kind of nasty. He drug it out of the other, but it looked hideous. It wasn't even fully <laughs> developed. It was gross. He, was, he wasn't murdering mm -hmm. the ba the fetus. Right. Okay. He was performing surgery. He thought he was helping. He was like, get this ugly disease <laughs> out of your body. It's a parasite. And he how do they, you know? It's because animals understand what parasites are better, better than, than human beings do. do. And how do you know that they don't think being ugly is an injury? <laughs> you know, they yeah. might be developed to see like their deformities and be like, it's a deformed <laughs> person, clearly. That's they're a like, tumor. They're like, he's just cross-eyed, deformed. <laughs> Kill him. He's on the he's on the list. You know? Uh, there were a lot of parts of this video that made me real sad, but he, he made sure <laughs> it was real uplifting at the end and I appreciate that. He did the sandwich effect. You know, when you like yeah. compliment somebody and then you tell them something rude about themselves mm -hmm. and then you and then you compliment him again it, it's like he did that but with death but with yeah with sad things yeah <laughs> but the videos are organized very well now for youtube and i'm very happy to be a part of that yeah uh his face is looking real clear i was gonna say his face is real big in it now too i yeah, like that that's very good <laughs> Uh, thanks for bringing me to this. This is the last one I'm going to do for a minute. This was kind of a lot. There was, there was a lot happening. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me, husband. I regret part of it. I want you to know that I would take care of the babies if you died. Right. Also. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, you're allowed to just roll them in the street for a couple <laughs> days, see how that works out. But if you got to take them back in, I would like that too. <laughs> but I won't. Steal somebody else's babies if our babies die. Oh, that's that's a good not gonna promise. happen. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. <laughs> Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, hope biscuits. It's skittin' lit.